Greetings everybody. This is going to be a video giving you a, an additional example of diagonalizing a 3x3 three three matrix. Now when we diagonalize a matrix what we mean is we start with a matrix like this one here that may that is not diagonal and write it as being similar to a diagonal matrix. So we're going to write A here, this matrix here, as equal to P times D times P inverse and where P is some invertible matrix and D is a diagonal matrix. A, a diagonal matrix remember is one that's square and has Non, has zero entries everywhere off the main diagonal. So um, let's uh, we have to construct the P and the D to do this, and we do that according to the diagonalization theorem in your book by looking at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. So first of all, is it even possible to take this matrix A and diagonalize it? Uh, the answer is not always, but in this particular case, uh, well, let's see. So the diagonalization theorem says that a three by three matrix like this can be diagonalized if and only if this matrix in this case has three linearly independent eigenvectors. So the first order of business to see if diagonalization here is even possible is to get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the matrix. Now I'm going to use Mathematica to do that using the command eigensystem. If I were not using Mathematica, how I would do this is take A and calculate its characteristic polynomial, which I can do by hand. That would involve a 3x3 three three determinant. Uh, find the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. That would give me the eigenvalues. And then go down the line through each of the eigenvalues and construct uh, some eigenvectors for those eigenvalues. So that's all stuff you know how to do by hand, and I encourage you to go back and double check this by hand once I get uh, Mathematica crank in here. So here is the result. Uh, remember, the result of the eigensystem command gives us uh, four objects. The first object here is a list that contains the eigenvalues for A. So A has two distinct eigenvalues, 5 and 2. The eigenvalue of 2 has multiplicity 2. And uh, here are the three eigenvectors that go with that, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0. Now the main thing to do here is to check to see if these vectors are linearly independent. The easiest way to do that, of course, is to put them into a matrix. So I'm just going to uh, call this matrix M for the time being. and um, put these vectors in. So the first vector is 1, 1, 1. The second vector is negative 1, 0, 1. The third one is negative 1, 1, 0. So I'm going to go 1, negative 1, negative 1. That's the first row. The second row is 1, uh, 0, 1. And the third row is 1, 1, 0. Now let's just do a quick check to see if this is uh, a linearly independent set. Uh, it will be so if the columns of that matrix, the three eigenvectors, row reduced to the identity matrix and it does. Okay, So this matrix has two distinct eigenvalues and three linearly independent eigenvectors. Because it has three linearly independent eigenvectors, I can proceed with the diagonalization. And I'm going to do that by hand uh, over on an additional screen because unfortunately Mathematica doesn't have a diagonalize command. So see you in a second. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just copied down all the information I have so far. There's my original matrix A and uh, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues that I determined using Mathematica. Okay, so we have the uh, eigenvalues and uh, the three linearly independent eigenvectors. Our goal here, remember, is to find uh, a P that's invertible and a D that's diagonal such that A is equal to P times D times P inverse. Now the diagonalization theorem actually makes this process almost trivial uh, because what it says is uh, if I know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors then I can construct the P and the D directly and here is how. The P, the invertible matrix that I want here, just consists of the three eigenvectors that I found. One, two, three, like so. So I'm going to form a three by three matrix just by slotting in the first eigenvector the second eigenvector, and then the third eigenvector. Now since those three eigenvectors, remember we already determined that those were a linearly independent set, and so I have here a 3x3 three three matrix with linearly independent columns. Invertible matrix theorem guarantees that that's going to be invertible. So that's the P, and we can calculate the P inverse if we wanted to. Uh, the D, the diagonal matrix, is going to be a 3x3 three three diagonal matrix, and the key thing here is what goes on the diagonal. Well, it just simply is the eigenvalues that correspond to the eigenvectors. This first eigenvector here uh, corresponded to lambda equals 5, so I'm going to put 5 in the first column. 
This one here corresponded to lambda equals 2, so I'm going to put 2 there on the second diagonal entry, and that one corresponded to 2, so that's going to go on the third diagonal entry. This is supposed to be a diagonal matrix, so everything else is going to consist of zeros. Okay, and that's it. That's the P and that's the D, and uh, we're going to go over to Mathematica again to double check that this actually works. Okay, so here we are back in Mathematica just to double check our answers here. I've got P set up here to be the matrix that we defined over in the uh, previous video. Uh, I can't call um, anything D in Mathematica because that's a protected symbol, so I'm going to call it DI for diagonal. And I just want to show you a quick trick for creating a diagonal matrix easily. It's the command called diagonal matrix. And to, uh, put, uh, to create a diagonal matrix, I'm just going to feed it a list of the diagonal entries. So it saves you a little bit of typing, and uh, here are the uh, results you see here. Now, uh, importantly, again, just to recap what the diagonalization theorem tells us, that uh, if I have three linearly independent eigen vectors for this matrix A, then I can diagonalize by creating P equal to the matrix whose columns are those diag are those uh, eigenvectors. Let me just show the matrix form of P just to uh, show you that's what I've got here. There are the eigenvectors for uh, P, and uh, the diagonal matrix part of this is, um, I'm sorry, I said it wasn't D, was it? It's DI. There we go. The diagonal matrix just consists of uh, the eigenvalues on the diagonal. But uh, let's just check to make sure that A is equal to P times D times P inverse. And we can do that just by going P times D times the inverse of P. And um, indeed, I do get my original matrix A back. So that shows that A is similar to a diagonal matrix. And among many things that that means is that A uh, has the same determinant as D does, uh, namely a determinant 20, and it has the same eigenvalues as D does.